all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody move with me. Like that the king, we make the plain simple. Bring it knowledge and fire at reality simple. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns. What must be done in order for you to call yourself proper leadership, the first thing that must be done, leadership must secure food, clothing, shelter, and jobs for the masses. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with your ideology. Matter of fact, as the nation of Islam is a prime example, when you can show that you can provide food, clothing, shelter, and jobs, your belief system, your ideology is more attractive to the people, even though they might not care anything about your belief system. But when you show them, well, I'm a black Muslim and my religion causes me to provide food, clothing, shelter, and jobs. And that attracts people. Not running around here talking about, you Uncle Tom, you a Sambo. All these people, what's her name? Candace Owens, um, Larry Elder, I can't keep up with all this. Jesse Lee Peterson. All these people you call Uncle Toms and Sambos and and whatever. What can they say when you can provide them a job? What is Candace on? She's in politics or whatever. Okay, so uh, I don't know what she's about, but give her a job. What is what is the what is the white man paying you, Candace? I can pay you that and give you these these extra perks. What what is you getting? from CNN and NBC. And all. What can they say? What can Jesse Lee Peterson say? You offer him more money than what he's getting. They can't say nothing. And then the, whoo, man. And then when they go to the store, the turkey they buy, you raise, we raise the turkey. The corn, the okra. We make the plates that you put the food on. We make the ovens that you cook the food in. Now you're talking. You don't have to call nobody, you a coon, you a sambo, and all that old nonsense. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Because you don't want to make that sacrifice in order to make all this a reality. You want to sit on your ass and hoard your money. And, you know, you, you can kick up, you can kick Farrakhan a few dollars and Tariq Nasheed and Yvette. You can kick that, but you don't want to put yourself in a position in order for this to become a reality. And plus, this is the main thing. You know that these people don't know what the hell they're doing because they have not produced anything. They have not really produced nothing. That's why the majority of these people really don't go in their pockets. They're not going to hurt themselves. 
Oh, well, I, I gave Farrakhan a few hundred. Don't hurt me none. But in order to really solve this problem that we find ourselves in, you got to hurt. You got to sacrifice. But you know that these people can't produce. You know they're not, they're nothing but preachers. Entertainment. If you really was if we really were serious about our struggle, we would give up our half million dollar houses, fifty thousand dollar cars, and three hundred dollar tennis shoes. If you was really serious, revolutionaries are poor because everything goes to the revolution. We got a war going on in Ukraine right now. Prior to any welfare that Ukraine gets from NATO or the United States, the people sacrifice and give to their soldiers so they can fight. Ain't nobody running around their brat showing off brand new limousines and diamond rings or whatever. You see dead bodies all over Ukraine. That's what you see. Mass graves. Everything they have is going to fight off Russia. You don't understand that because you're nothing but a comfortable slave. You can fool yourself. You're not fooling Angel Snuff Number no. 7 and you don't fool the people here. You're not real. So proper leadership that's on time and understands the time, you must produce food, clothing, shelter, jobs. You must secure the people. And I know a lot of black men will get angry and I don't give a damn. I don't. I really don't. You know I don't give a damn. Food, clothing, shelter, jobs. You must protect the black woman. We must protect the soul sisters. You must gain her respect. Because she's your best ally. She's your best friend. She's your number one supporter. She has to be on your side. She's your equal. You don't put her to the side. You walk together. You walk strong. When you throw a brick, she got her brick in her hand right behind yours. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me in the teaching, a man does not look good until he looks good in the eyes of a woman. The problem is most of you sisters never had a real man in order to say, oh, that man looks good. Because as long as he's wearing a, a nice shirt, driving a pretty car, can run his mouth and got a job. Oh, he's so, and, and he buy you a bag of potato chips and a soda. Oh, he's so nice. He's so, I like that. He's, that's great. That's all that's required. Oh, of course, don't forget the, the big ding -a lane He's swinging around. Oh, that, that's so nice. Oh, that's, that's perfect. I got to be satisfied. Well, don't worry about that. I can satisfy you. <laughs> Woo, boy, boy, boy. <clears throat> Why you why you gotta bring those women up? When we think about our sisters, when we think about the black woman, we think about her in this condition that she's in now. You can't comprehend and you don't understand. You cannot see her in her natural setting. Because this, what you see, 
This is not her. This is something that corrupt men have made. This is not her mind. This is not, she's not moving within her nature. All this, this is man-made. This is not her. And she's in survival mode. So she does things to survive like we do as a people. We do, we do whatever we have to do in order to survive. And when you do that, you do things that you normally would not do. If somebody pull a gun on you, you give them your money. Under natural circumstances, you ain't gonna give nobody your money. Yo, you crazy. I ain't gonna give you my money like that. But you are under, that's not, that's an unusual circumstance. You have somebody with a weapon that you know can threaten your life. And now some people will be who they are and mess around and get shot and go to the morgue over a couple of dollars. But you go into survival mode. Hey, 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 wait a minute, buddy. You don't have to do that. Look, 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 here's my credit card. Here's my, you're trying to survive. So this woman that we see, that's not, that's not the real woman. All over the world, that's not real womanhood. These are women that have been influenced and domesticated by men throughout the centuries. Even us black people in America, all this fighting and cussing and how we hate each other, that's not natural for us. Where was all this on the slave plantation? You didn't see all this going on in the slave plantation. Where's the stories of all this hate and nationalness, how we do? Look, I grew up in the 1960s. I don't remember all this. Nobody's perfect. People interact with each other. You're going to have problems. But this stuff that I see in 2022, I don't remember all this hate and nationalists growing up. And we always had different religions. We've always thought differently. Now, where do you live? I will come to your house and kick your ass. I remember, even as children, we would get in a fight over a basketball game or fight over a girl or whatever. I mean, just get the brawl and pop, 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 smash, smash, smash. Next thing you know, we on the basketball court, the same people that was fighting, we on the basketball court playing ball. No big deal. Hey, man, what's your... Damn, you still got that black eye, bro. Yeah, man. That's the only reason why you're gonna beat me, man. Cause yeah, I got I still my eye still sort of swollen, but I'm gonna beat you on the on the court today. <laughs> it's all gravy, man. Now, nigga, you shouldn't have done that. Pop, 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 pop. Where you live, I will come to your house, kill your mama, kill your dog. We want to blame this on the white man. They want to blame it on the white man. But the, this is coming from the black power folks. <laughs> this is coming from the black, the blackity black, Hebrew Israelite, Pan African, whatever. That's who it. Thank you.